Who was the best heavy metal painter in the old hammer times? So heavy metal have had many, many different painters over the years in their team. I'm not sure where they came up with the name heavy metal, and I don't know where that term was originally used. I don't know if they took it from something else. Maybe the people doing the work, doing the work, maybe the heavy metal painters enjoyed heavy metal music. That's going to be my guess. If anyone does know the origination, origination, if anyone does know the origin of the heavy metal name, then please let us know in the comments below. Now, the heavy metal painters are an elite team of expert miniature painters. There's a lot of people aspire to be like. Or paint as well as, I should say. Some people don't like the heavy metal style, but a lot of people do. I myself quite enjoy it. I like to appreciate many different styles, you see. Now, some of the first heavy metal painters, the original heavy metal teams, seem to have set the tone for future heavy metal painters over the years. Many new heavy metal painters have come over the years, and I'm going to assume there's still going to be many, many more new painters joining their ranks over the next few years. If you would like to be one, or if you have applied to be one, then let us know in the comments below. And why? Anyway, let's check out some of the early heavy metal team's work. The 1980s heavy metal team. These were the people who painted the miniatures you saw in Games Workshop publications and White Dwarf magazine, and whose work has long been an inspiration to many a Golden Demon entrant. This video is devoted to those individuals. First up is Phil Lewis. Phil was also Games Workshop's photographer and the man who is probably responsible for most of the pictures that you see in the rest of this video. First up is this awesome looking skeleton mini which I'm going to assume is from either the Skeleton Hordes box set or maybe the Skeleton Army box set. This army was always one of my favourites growing up. It would appear he is a definite undead fan, as he has also painted this large regiment of skeletons. I do wonder if he had any more units in this army, or was it just a one-off? The next heavy metal team member is Colin Dixon. So first up from Colin is a Minotaur. And normally I expect to see Minotaurs as some sort of hairy beast, but this one seems more like a half-man, half-bull type of Minotaur, which might even be what a classical Minotaur is supposed to look like. I am not a Minotaur expert. Colin has also painted these wonderful goblins or orcs. I can never quite tell the difference back in the 80s but I do love the way they have some amazing facial expressions. But to top it off, what I like most is the older style of painting orcs and goblins with a very light, almost yellowy green. I think it looks fantastic. Colin has also painted this knight style miniature, which I do not recognize. I do not know if it's a normal empire miniature or perhaps a Chaos miniature. What points me towards Chaos is the strange roundel situated between the two horns of his helmet. He does have a massive axe head though. Incredible. Colin has also painted a dwarf here with a wonderful hat. I don't know if this is a dwarf character, but he certainly looks to be some sort of personality to me. I do love the texture he has achieved on that chainmail. And speaking of chainmail, next up from Colin, we have a trio of men at arms or knights or some other type of medieval warriors. I don't know if they're all supposed to be from the same warband as it were, or if they are all individual warriors, but to me, they look like they might be Vikings. Perhaps my favourite miniature from Colin up next in this video is this other knight with a moon on his head. 
That moon is incredible. It reminds me of those old Chaos familiars, or were they just some sort of fantasy familiar? Were they for Chaos? But I'm pretty sure there was a moon with legs, or a moon holding a book with legs. Anyway, the moon is brilliant, and I also love that blue colour. Next up is this very strange miniature. Now, it looks a little bit like some sort of troll. It also reminds me of a Necron flayed one, and that's purely because of the pose, I think. However, I don't recognise it, so if any of you guys can tell me what this miniature is, please do so in the comments below. I think the face on this is fantastic. It reminds me of a puppet or goblin from the Jim Henson Labyrinth movie. Lastly from Colin is this wonderful Minotaur or Beastman here. I think it is more of the Beastman persuasion. A nice clean miniature. It's not overly busy, but I do like his red horns. And again, he does seem to have a massive axe head. Awesome. The next heavy metal team member to come along is Dave Andrews. And sadly, I don't have a lot of his work to show you. However, he was involved in this beautiful Ultramarines banner bearer, Rogue Trader era Space Marine, which I think is a beautiful composition. Now, apparently this has been done with the assistance of Mike McVeigh, so I don't know who is responsible for what parts. Perhaps Dave was responsible for the banner and Mike was responsible for the Marine, or maybe vice versa. If any of you out there know, then please let me know. And also, by the way, did you notice the huge banner has taken your attention away from the fact that the base is completely unfinished? <laughs> Up next is one of the kings of the hobby, one of everybody's fan favourites, John Blanche. So first up from John, we have the famous Minotaur conversion holding the Mona Lisa. Now I have always wondered if that Mona Lisa in this picture was actually freehand or some sort of picture he had cut out and manipulated himself. However, now I am older, I believe it is actually freehand and it does look absolutely fantastic. Also, I love all that mushroomy growth on the base. I do miss the mushrooms. Next up from John is this Valkyrie lady. Now I do wonder if she was from the fantasy game. Is this a dark elf or is this some sort of Necromunda miniature? She almost looks like an Escher to me. I do love that hairstyle. Fantastic. Also I do like the way that white creamy bone coloured shield contrasts against the colours of the armour which appear to be a green and almost purple tinted undersuit. Also of note is the reflective elements of that axe haft again. I do wonder if that's a gloss effect going on there or if that is actually painted on. Next up from John is what appears to be a blood letter conversion. He has chopped the head off the blood letter and added a minotaur or bull with a little grim reaper miniature riding upon the top, and I have no idea where those two parts of the conversion come from. This guy was a master, or still is a master, of the conversion. Another John Blanche mini up next, and this time it's some sort of religious looking warrior to me. I do love the patterned effect going on with the robes of the gentleman here. Also, I don't recognize the head of this one, Perhaps this is also some sort of dark elf conversion. By the way, if you have any idea where any of the parts of these conversions come from, please let us all know. Also from John are these small characters, a pair of little goblins if you will. Again, these remind me of characters from the Labyrinth movie. The sort of little things you would see running around causing trouble in the background. I do love the one with the ball and chain there. Not sure what the other's doing. At first glance, I thought he was holding a fish, but now I realize that's actually his arm. Lastly from John is this beautiful demonet of chaos, and you cannot beat the expression of that face. 
the demonette looks quite concerned about the fact that they have pincers for hands. One of my favourite 80s painters up next, and that's Brian George. Sadly, we don't get to see a lot of Brian's work in this video, but we do get to see this wonderful boar or wolfy thing. Is it a wag? It seems to be a sort of hairy boar. I'm going with boar. Being ridden by this, what I assume is a goblin or orc shaman. I just love the expression on that face and the detail on that eye patch is amazing. There's also something on the ground next to the boar and I don't know what that is. One of the most famous sculptors around and still to this day I believe, it's Ali Morrison. One of my favourite images in this video up now and that's Ali Morrison's Blood Angels Tactical Squad. These are absolutely magnificent. I love the details on the Tactical Squad or the tactical markings as it were. The homemade banner starting off a tradition of wonderful Space Marine banners. The almost leopard-like armour of that Blood Angels captain or officer there. I don't know of what rank he actually is. I'm sure someone will be along to tell us. And what I think is a chaplain conversion standing next to him. An absolute marvel of painting there. Ali Morrison has also painted a troll with the biggest hammer known to trolls. No, I don't know if it's the biggest hammer, but it certainly looks like a very large hammer to me. And I also like the piercings he has in his arms there. They must have hurt quite a lot having those done. And to top it all off, he has some absolutely wonderful blue tattoos going on around his body from his face, his chin and down his forearm there. Also, if you look closely, you can see a little blue snake tattoo on the inside of his right forearm. Wonderful. Another demonette up now. This one is wearing some fabulous golden armour around its chest, leaving its breast out for all to see. That's definitely Slanesh. Not sure I would wear such a piece of armour myself. However, this demonette is rocking it. I do love those bright red pincers there and that yellow mohawk. Interestingly, we have another blue tattoo. Slanesh making another appearance now with an old fiend of Slanesh. I do like the face on this guy. I think it's a nod to the Keeper of Secrets face. Keeper of Secrets, now that's an awesome name, isn't it? Anyway, we're talking about the fiend and it has a lovely long serpentine tail coming up to a scorpion sting there and one of the longest tongues I think I've ever seen on a miniature. Speaking of a Keeper of Secrets, that is exactly what has materialised next for us. I have to say that since I have been into the hobby, the Keeper of Secrets has always been my favourite of all the greater demons, and Slanesh was probably, or is probably still, my favourite god. That sounds terrible, doesn't it? Favourite god. Also of note, a little bit off topic, someone once told me that Sla in Slanesh was an abbreviation of Sex and Love Addict. Anonymous. Now, I'm not 100% sure if that's true. I'm sure someone out there does know. Anyway, back to the miniature. We have another of our blue tattoos here on the top of the cow's head and a very strange tongue. I don't think that tongue is original on the miniature. It looks like an aubergine or a red aubergine coming out of its mouth. I believe in America they refer to the aubergine as an eggplant, but I may be incorrect there. Also, this Keeper of Secrets has the glossiest chaps that I've ever seen on any miniature ever. Now, when painting, a lot of people use these miniature holders. I have one over here. Here's the old Games Workshop one. And here is the new one, which people say looks like a um, bath plug, was it? Something like that. 
Um, but there's a little bit of inscription around this lip on the bottom. I don't know if you can make that out there, but it says, if you're enjoying this video, then please like it and subscribe to the channel. That means you, Jacob. If you are enjoying the content on the channel, then please consider joining the Patreon, the link to which is in the description below or up here. Here's a fellow some of you younger people might recognise as he's still in the biz, as it were. It's Tony Cottrell. Again, sadly, we don't have much of Tony's work to show in this video, but one day I do hope to be able to show you some more of his older pieces. Some of those titans come to mind that he made. Anyway, this is a car from the Dark Future board game. It's a game which is a little bit like Mad Max on the tabletop, as it were, and predates things like Gaslands by a long way. This one, I think, is a conversion of sorts from one of the basic Renegade vehicles that you would get in the boxed set. That mesh window is incredible. Check it out, everyone. Next up, it's Sid. Now, did anyone ever know Sid's real name? Now, we have a trio of Space Marines here. Well, I say a trio, it's actually a pair with one of the first Inquisitor miniatures in between them. And these were painted by Sid and Mike McVeigh. I don't know which one was painted by Sid or Mike McVeigh. Now, if any of you guys out there can tell us which one of these Sid painted, then please let us know. I'm going to assume it's the Inquisitor, but I really shouldn't be assuming, should I? Sid has also painted this fantasy era cannon weapons team. And the first thing I notice when I see this picture is the amusing expression on the chap with the blue tabard. He really doesn't look like he gives a shit, and I think that's fantastic. I especially like the way the lookout or the range finder gentleman has another great big mallet. These things were very popular in the 80s. Next up, a man who refuses to look at the camera when he's having his picture taken. It's Darren Matthews. First up from Darren is this wonderful Harlequin miniature for the Rogue Trader era of Warhammer 40,000. Now, I remember hearing a story about the Harlequins painted by Darren Matthews. I heard that he painted the entire set of 18 miniatures in one weekend, and I think that's an incredible feat. The 18 miniatures in question were from a box called Harlequins, and I think it was the RTB04 set, but I may be incorrect. Maybe RTB05. I'm not 100% sure. Again, there's always someone around here in the comments below to let me know where I was incorrect. This is where all those wonderful Harlequin patterns originated. Another Harlequin here by Darren Matthews, and this one has another diamond or lozenge pattern going on down one leg and an interesting mottled leg on his left leg. Do the Harlequins still use the dotted mottled pattern? I would like to know. I haven't looked at the new Harlequins to be quite honest with you. However, he does have one of the coolest looking weapons that I've ever seen in Warhammer 40,000. That's either a flamer or a web gun or perhaps something else. This Chaos Sorcerer was also painted by Darren Matthews, and he has an interesting little symbol there on the roundel on his right shoulder. I don't know if that has any indication of which god he serves. Maybe this miniature was painted before the gods themselves were even invented by Games Workshop. However, you do have to love the way he is rocking out there with his left hand. Rock on, Chaos Sorcerer. Here we have a man some of you might recognise from the heavy metal team of years past. It's Kev Adams. So first up, Kev has painted this amazing goblin warband here. There are only five miniatures, but I think these are five of the most stunning goblins I think I've ever seen painted. I love the tone of their skin, 
and I love the detail on the banner and the shields. This was the era of the grinning face. You saw it everywhere. Interestingly, a friend of mine even had it tattooed on his arm, and he refused to admit that it was from some Games Workshop miniatures. You have to love that musician on the right hand side there. I wonder what that instrument sounds like. Kev Adams has also painted one of my favourite miniatures in this whole video, and that is this ogre type fellow here wearing a rickety helmet. The contrast on this miniature is absolutely divine. It's so readable, it's so clear, and it's wonderful. The metallics are perfect in my opinion, and I just love the, the light and shade going on with his face. A masterpiece of years gone by. Kevin has also painted this diorama of sorts, which features some goblins, or maybe even snotlings, firing some sort of strange battlefield contraption. I do like those little puddles there. I wonder what they used for water effects back in the day. Lastly, Kevin has painted this orc shaman, I believe, who again is sporting a wonderful headpiece and one of those grinning faces on the shields. Maybe I should have a go at that one day. Let me know if you've ever painted one of those grinning faces. How did it turn out? The next member of the heavy metal team of the 80s we'll be taking a look at is Richard Wright. Richard has painted this interesting miniature here with some of the smoothest stripes on a pair of trousers that I think I've ever seen. This miniature appears to be an elf of sorts but when looking at it, I feel reminded of maybe a talisman character or maybe even something from Advanced Hero Quest. It definitely has the feel of some sort of Dungeons and Dragons y role playing character. I do like the blonde braid on the hair there. I think that's marvellous. Another famous piece up next, and this is an ogre. Again, we can see one of those gurning faces on his, I was going to say chest plate, but it's more of a belly plate, isn't it? The colours on this are absolutely fantastic. It's really, really well painted. It's clear and it's precise, and it almost looks like a contemporary piece in the way that it's painted. Maybe Richard Wright was ahead of his time. Just check out the highlighting on that scabbard. Wonderful. Now, one of the most famous, if not the most famous, member now of the 80s heavy metal team, Mike McVeigh. So firstly, we have this RTB01 plastic space marine here, painted by Mike, and he has painted it in the scheme of the military police of the time. I can't remember if they have a specific term, but I do remember just calling them the Space Marine Police when I was a youngster. And I do like the way that Forge World have recently referenced this scheme in the Space Wolves part of their Horus Heresy books. I believe it's in book 7. Mike McVeigh has also painted this awesome looking dwarf here. And what I most like about this is the way that we appear to be moving into Goblin Green basing territory. I wonder who was the first to do it. Was it Mike McVeigh, eh? Talking about bases, we now have a miniature with a very interesting base, and this is a dwarf dragon slayer, I believe, using the dragon's head as the miniature's base. And this is a technique I don't think I have seen replicated since. I do love the blood effects on that axe blade, and I also love the defeated expression there on that dragon's face. Very, very characterful. A beautiful space orc up next by Mike McVeigh, and you can see the very clear and concise painting style that Mike had. It reminds me a little of Richard Wright's previously. It's definitely the precursor of the standard heavy metal style that we have today. That orc skin tone is absolutely beautiful. I love this miniature. He has also painted this strange wizard character. I think this is a dwarven wizard, 
although I did not know that dwarfs actually had wizards. Maybe this is pre-standard dwarf lore, or maybe this is just a dwarf in fancy dress. Anyway, again, we have some of the goblin green basing going on, and he's done a wonderful job of painting in the expression on this dwarf wizard. I might get a hat like that for myself. So that was some of the work of the early heavy metal team members. What did you think of that? Who was your favourite Old Hammer era heavy metal painter? What do you think was the heavy metal teams in the Old Hammer days best miniature? How many heavy metal members do you think there's been over the years? It's not a contest, there's no prize for this one. Who do you think has contributed most to the heavy metal team over the years. I'm going to go with Mike McVeigh. Feel free to slag off my answer in the comments below. Who would you like to see join the heavy metal team? Occasionally, I see jobs going for the heavy effy. Who is this effy? Occasionally, I see jobs going for the heavy metal team in the pages of White Dwarf or on their online website. That was quite hard for me to say for some reason. I've never considered joining and I don't know how well they pay. And that is very important. I've always wondered what it's like to work there in the studio. I can always imagine it being a really exciting bunch of interesting people having a great time furiously painting their miniatures. I do wonder if they're on any sort of schedule or they're told which miniatures to paint or anything like that. I'd like to know how it's run. If you want to see some more Old Hammer videos, and I know you do, then check out the playlist up here somewhere. As always, thank you very much for watching, and always remember to drill your barrels.